Hello, I'm Roger Smith and this is the third in a series of video reports on my large Tesla coil. Today I'm going to describe a little more about my charging choke and talk about how I made it. And here it is. As you can see I started to take it apart here uh, so I can show you how it's put together. I made this from a, an old discarded transformer. I took apart the, uh, the laminations and uh, made a coil form and wound, wound a new coil on it and put it all back together. Uh, I got my meter hooked up to it here. Uh, so it reads about 12 Henry's. I got the eye strips taken off so you can see down from the top uh, what it looks like in there. Uh, the bigger transformer you can find the better. It gives you lots of room for insulation and uh, also you don't want to end up saturating your core so if you have a, a really big core uh, you can avoid that kind of a problem. I'm going to describe here how I wound the coil for this charging choke. Uh, the really important thing about it is it has to be able to withstand very high voltages. You wouldn't think a coil wire would have that problem, but <laughs> uh, it it does. Uh, here's a, a cross-sectional drawing of the of the choke itself. Uh, the blue represents the core laminations, and the red represents cross-sectional view of the winding. Uh, there's there's going to be a high potential between the outer part of the winding and the inner part of the winding. So uh, you'll have a tendency for the voltage to arc over to the core if it gets too close to it. The inner part of the winding is grounded to the core. So it works good if you have a transformer with a, a very large core so you have lots of room in here. And also I tapered the winding so that at the extreme end here the end of the winding has a good clearance between it and the, and the core both this way and this way. And also, I put some insulation in, in here. That's these plastic strips here. I'll probably add some more in there sometime. <laughs> um, the other thing about this is there's about 15 layers of windings here. It's kind of hard to see that looking at the transformer itself there or the choke itself it's wound with number 26 gauge wire and all together there's 2,000 turns and there's a tendency for the thing to arc out from layer to layer in, in the windings uh, one of the things I had to do prevent that was a uh, kind of a special technique of winding the thing. Uh, uh, normally when you wind the coil you start from one end wind down to the other and then you apply some insulation maybe if you're going to do that and then wind from the bottom back up to the top. But if you do that you end up with the voltage between both your windings uh, across 
uh, your whatever your insulating material is up at the top. Uh, so what I did, I I found another technique where uh, after winding the first layer, uh, run put it apply some insulating material, which in this case was uh, like a mylar tape, and run wire up to the back to the top of the coil form and lay some tape over top of the wire and then wind the coil from the top down again so that way the voltage between each layer at any given point will only be the, the voltage uh, created in one uh, layer of, of the winding instead of uh, having uh, the combined voltage of two layers um, at one point. I wanted to show you one more thing here with my eye laminations off the top of the choke I got my inductance meter hooked up here you can see we're down to 4.7 Henry's uh, I ran the coil like this once and it, it worked uh, uh, it seemed to be enough inductance normally I have a spacer in here in between my uh, eye strips and the rest of the core to give me a little bit of air gap uh, that that limits the uh, amount of inductance a little bit not that it seems to make much difference but uh, it prevents the possibility of the core being saturated somewhat uh, so that gives, gives me a great deal of control over the over the inductance of the choke. Uh, if I don't use a spacer at all, uh, it goes off the scale on my meter, which only goes up to about 20 Henry's. I'll zoom in for a close up of the windings here. You can see the different layers there and in between each layer of winding, there's uh, uh, about four or five layers of uh, clear plastic tape. Uh, I use that tape that you buy for packaging and uh, stuff like that. It's fairly common. I don't know if it's the best tape to use, but it seems to work. Well that about does it for the charging choke. Next time I'm going to increase the value of the capacitor in the primary circuit from 0 0.04 microfarads to 0 0.05 and we'll see what kind of a difference that makes on the discharge of the coil after we retune. It ought to be interesting. Uh, thanks for watching.